Okay, everybody, welcome to today's Joint City Council Public Works meeting, Tuesday, September 7th. I'm going to call it to order and turn it over to Mr. Viersma. Okay, I'll uh, call the meeting order for the City Public Works Commission. Our first item of business is to approve the minutes from the last meeting on August 2nd. Make them all here. Motion to approve the minutes from last month. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item is uh, uh, Phil has an update on, on the projects. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I did provide a report. The uh, Casa 66 Sanitary Sewer Extension Stormwater, uh, that improvement hearing is on <coughs> September 22nd. That's a Wednesday night. That will be the second time we're in front of the um, residents to discuss this improvement. The, the uh, assessment approach has changed slightly. We've kind of uniformly set the residential, the commercial rate, um, and we've talked uh, in terms of the terms that we would provide as well as better defined what we, what we, what we saw was a sewer system that needed to be uh, replaced based on age. So again, that will be on Wednesday night, the 22nd. The 2022 road improvements, I, I did put a, a few paragraphs here, but essentially we had that improvement hearing um, on uh, August 25th. We had, um, I think I counted up 29 in attendance, 29 signatures plus staff. Uh, we did get a few comments before. Uh, we did have in that two written column petitions uh, of people in, not in support of improvement or assessment. Um, and then uh, again, some comments about the properness or appropriateness of assessing versus um, general fund expenditure. Um, but essentially, we're, we're at the point where we, we've, we've followed all of the processes associated with 429. Uh, I think we've had information meetings. I think everyone understands what the city's proposing and the associated costs. We're at the point of either the council saying proceed further and get the plans together and let's bid this and build it next year if the pricing comes in in a range where we ex accept it or not proceeding forward. This is a not, it is not a petitioned improvement so you would need a super majority in the vote for that to be approved by the city council or four fifths. So, um, and then the RRFB installation I think it's positive news and that we have a, con a contractor that's been hired by the city at their special meeting on Friday. Uh, it's beach construction and they've indicated they will coming in the week or sometime next week to do that work. And I understand Ted has everything else. So that's my update. I'll answer any questions you have. Okay. Phil, I got a question for you. The sewer project, what is the uh, estimated cost for the project now? Total project stormwater sanitary, uh, two point something million. I think it's. Is there any kind of breakdown for that? Yeah, it's in the information I provided before. It's, it's uh, uh, broken into stormwater sanitary, and then that's further broken into county cost, city cost, and then uh, county city grant cost. The city sent a letter out this last week that it's 2.35 million. Total, total project, all of the estimated construction cost and associated engineering, yep. That just kind of floored me how it got from one, two last year to two, three <coughs> this year, so. One, two, and then that, that, didn't, that was only sanitary, didn't include the stormwater. Yeah. That but is actually one of the aspects of this that city, and a great point, glad you brought that up. We've seen nothing but an increase in uh, pipe-related costs this year for construction. Uh, for example, um, simple buried uh, sanitary sewer pipe now, whether, the, whether this is related to supply chain issues, natural disasters, where they're refining for plastic products, whatever, but um, we just got a quote for uh, the cost to put an eight-inch pipe in, um, it was only 14 feet deep, it was 75 bucks a foot. And previously we probably played in the 35 to 40 bucks a foot. So we're seeing material costs and some of these things skyrocket. And Steel has always been up, this is some new stuff. 
you're blaming that primarily on the cost of the I'm not blaming it. I'm telling I you mean, what we're being told kinda, that, that it is supply chain related, materials demands, <clears throat> things like that. <clears throat> and, and that's not uncommon to see ebbs and flows. Uh, anytime there's a hurricane in the Gulf, we see whether it's actual or whether it's opportunistic, we see some increases at times. Um, I think you've seen it in Batumas when, when the Bakken's is going uh, and there's competition in the oil market, we might see better bituminous prices. So far, we haven't seen an increase in bituminous prices for paving, so to speak. But so where, where was that in the packet, in the council packet last month? It was in I, the I update. Didn't see it's, it. Is in the update that was provided to the Public Works Committee last month and approved at your council meeting the following week. It's the update to the feasibility report. I just never saw it. I can probably numbers. pull it out of my stuff and get it to you if you want to see the breakdown. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. So we're doing the storm sewer project and the sewer sanitary sewer project together? Consecutive, yep, simultaneously because they... Uh, uh, end up impacting each other. So of the two, three, how much grant money approximately is there going to offset? There's $315,000 of Bowser grant to offset that. End of story? For the stormwater, yep, end of story. And then the county, uh, we estimated that they're uh, up near 400000 in contribution. So it's seven total. Round numbers, I think. Yeah. So that'll get it down to a million six or something to the city. Yeah. Okay. I have that info. <clears throat> we're we're like talking rough that. numbers, and I, you do have that, but I'll, I'll definitely pull it out, and you can look at it. I'd appreciate it. So the county doesn't want to do the storm sewer project? So what the county wants, no. So um, we impact pretty significantly by putting this deep sanitary sewer pipe in. If you imagine, and I don't want to, take you down a road you've already been, but the, our pipe starts 20 feet deep and gets up to eight feet deep by the time we get to the car wash. So when we go through there, the sanitary sewer pipe is, is probably anywhere from six feet to three feet deep. So we dig way below it and we end up having to basically disassemble it to get down to our pipe. In discussions with the county, that pipe was put in in 1978. It is concrete pipe, so it will last a long time, but they recognize that that pipe has ran a period of time already on it, and it probably should be replaced. So what the county is doing is saying that any piece of pipe that the city would impact with our sanitary sewer, they'll pay 50% of the costs associated with that. At least this is not a formalized agreement. This is the agreement that they've sent, and I've copied Mike on how they laid out. So if you can imagine, we interrupt, we have to disassemble a storm sewer pipe above our sanitary, sanitary sewer pipe below. They'll pay 50% of the cost to put brand new pipe back over the top. And then that will leave leads, if you will, that connect to those pipes. And those are still 1978 year vintage when they were put in and the county doesn't want to leave a new segment, old segment in there. They'll pay 100% to replace those segments. And then there's some segments we added that have to get to the storm ponds, and those are considered to be under the uh, combination of grant, city, and county, meaning the grant will cover up to 315,000 and above that, while the city and the county are supposed to be matching the grant to 25%. So if you look at what, to take full advantage of that grant at 315, we'll have another 25% city and county that will be added on top of that. So that's another $70,000 roughly. So it's a, it's a combination of about 385,000 total grant city county contribution. Is that the normal percentage? That's 50, what the 50? Bowser, that's what this Bowser grant is, is a 25% match. And they'll grant up to 315,000. But if we were not doing sanitary store and the storm had to be replaced, would the county be picking it up? If, yeah, if, if we weren't impacting their pipe um, and they decided they want to replace it, then they would replace it at 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's my understanding of it. They don't want to replace any of it, but since we're in there digging it up, they realize the time is right. Do, do, we, have to, do we have to carry the money for a while? Correct. Um, under the, the way it's set up, 
the city would be carrying the cost or the dollars that the county would be giving to this until 2024. 2024. We would be carrying that. The Bowser grant gets, uh, I don't believe that, that gets cashed in once you get reimbursed on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Bowser's not tied to a future date. It's get done, show you've done the work, and it, it comes in, I think. Phil, I have a question. Yep. Uh, like in Moonlight Bay, you can see the pipe that sticks out into the hill from the storm sewer that the county put in. Are, is part of the project to just plug those or to remove so them? So there are two, um, and actually it's a good point, over at, uh, in addition to <clears throat> taking a lot of the storm water from the road and putting into these uh, bioretention areas for mm -hmm. treatment before it flows back into the lake, the stuff across from Simonson, so just to the south of Moonlight, and actually that one at Moonlight, I believe, um, they get abandoned. We take those out and the flow goes to the Simonson stormwater pond. So we actually, re that's a, a removed discharge point. Phil, how about the one at Old Log Landing? <clears throat> that should be impacted as well. We we, that one will be an overflow still, but it, it, the idea is the water will go through the, the water quality feature first and then overflow out to the lake there, so it's treated. So we do have a couple of discharge points that remain, but the water going out should be treated. Not like Ted's wastewater treatment plant, but the first flush being the pollutant goes into the retention area, everything beyond that is supposedly already been rinsed and is cleaner and can get to the lake. My other question is, um, the county plan part, paying part of that 25% match? Yes. Okay. Splitting it with the city as I understand it. Is the county paying for any curb and gutter? They have uh, some segments, that's why their cost, um, if you, Back early on, I think we thought the county's cost, we first started this was like 200 or two and a quarter. It's up to about 400,000 now because <coughs> in addition to uh, the stuff we had identified, they have specific areas along the project segment that they want to replace some curb that wouldn't be impacted by our project. Okay. And they have some valley gutter too they want to replace and a couple, uh, I think even a structure they wanted to outright replace, so. Okay. So I would say we have a, because the project hasn't stepped up to go forward, um, we have the framework for an agreement. We don't have signatures. We have um, a lot of dialogue correspondence between the assistant county engineer and us, and we copied uh, Mike on that particular discussion. Any more questions for Phil? Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is uh, making a recommendation to the City Council for approving the uh, resolution on the street improvements, resolution ordering the improvement and the preparation of plans by Moulton, Bolton Mink. Any uh, discussion on that? No, no discussion on the uh, street improvements? Doug, let me have a little bit of discussion on it. It seems to me that I'm gonna use Wildwood Ranch for an example. Last year we had a price of 180 the year before it was like 110 to do that project and now it's 215 or something 205 or whatever it is it's close to that it seems like this pricing is going up by 50 percent each year and it's kind of following through with the wastewater plant it seems like it's following through with so i want everybody to think about you know, we've got five street projects, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do we want to do them all this year? I mean, I'm going to think about it and I'm going to do it, but if prices are inflated and high, and Phil just said that asphalt is not up, but 
just based on what all this pricing is, it seems to me that the projects are costing a lot more. So if we don't need to do one, maybe we shouldn't do it and do something else and get it paid for and come back, especially when all the people are coming in and saying, we don't think the road's bad, we don't need to do it, which is certainly true on Whitefish Avenue. Mm -hmm. I believe even Birch and Arrows, you know, even that's the oldest road, but I just know in my house, when the prices are the highest thing, I choose to not do very much stuff. And I'm gonna wait and see if it turns down again. And it just seems to me that everything we're looking at here no, is, white, is... Whitefish seem to have more people um, against the assessment which is related to an overlay. Um, and I think that cost for that job to overlay was 400, 500,000. And, and the city could spend some money and seal coat it, do some patching and seal coat it. There'd be no assessments to the, to the property owners, which would make them happy, I think, and give us a better road for five, 10 years. Without spending a lot of money. Seven years or whatever. But yeah. the road's not that terrible right mm -hmm. now. There may be a few corrections, but in general, mm -hmm. people are satisfied with that road. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a little late in the game. We're ready to put this out for bids, but it just I just look at all this pricing and it just seems to be kind of going out of control. Can I ask a question of Phil? How is this being bid as one lump or are the projects being separated out? And could we do a, a alternate deduct, alternate add to take out the overlay on whitefish and instead do a seal coat? So um, our initial thought was we would, bid, we would bid this as one project, to get unit costs for the various elements of it because they would be very similar, and then apply those uh, to each of the areas. Um, you could bid the whole thing and you could uh, have language in there that just says the city, uh, the city can ch modify uh, the scope accordingly. The seal coating the city wouldn't do on their own, I don't believe. I think you would partner with the county and kind of go with the okay. county on that. So okay. what I think you would be doing is reducing quantity for blacktop or um, yeah, in that case, the bituminous overlay is, is, a, is a bituminous quantity that you would be reducing. Um, there are rules within MnDOT standard specification that if you reduce an item by, um, and I think we do a special provision on it, like 25%. So if you have 100 and you reduce it down to 50, you've changed kind of the size dramatically where it's, the contractor, in all fairness, it might cost them differently. So you just would have to realize that if you pull that out, there might be an opportunity for a contractor to renegotiate a unit price on that. But that's how we, out of the gate. Now again, we're not ready to bid. No. You're only up to right. the preliminary. Mm -hmm. We still have to put the plan together. Um, you I come did, back, you'll come back with a new estimate. We'd come back with a new based estimate. Based on what the bids have been lately and right. as updated as you can. Yeah. And honestly, you know, my first question is, do you intend to do these improvements? The design doesn't change. Your question is going to be whether the costs are going to increase. Well, you bid the project and you know whether your numbers are within your level or not. You can always say we're not going to bid or we're not going to accept bids and reject them. Hold the plans and rebid at a later year or whatever. But... Um, we're, we're a far away from bidding, you know. We do have a lot of good information, but we need to meet with property owners. At, on Whitefish, I've, I had calls, many calls from one individual who wants me to talk to him about stormwater, and I said, I'm not trying to blow you off, but until, until there's a direction by the city to go forward and do the plans, I'm kind of wasting your time and mine, so. Yes, when you when you bid a project, you could have each street could have its own bid schedule. You could, yep. That's what I used to do. Each street has its own bid schedule, and you could pluck one off if if it's small enough that you could remove it. And not, and if you go cover it with special provisions that you could have the right to do that. Yep. You can do that. It's not good to bid that way and pull something out of a contract like that. Yeah. Well, you're you're right. It, you want to build it. You know. 
we could we could do unless it. the whole price was too high and reject the whole thing, come back next year, and try it again. Yeah, we have those options. I just don't want to wait to the eleventh hour and express my personal feeling about it, but I just feel like things are getting expensive all the way across the board, and I don't know where the need is, you know. And we got to prioritize the need. Personally, I think the stormwater deal is more of a need that, you know, depending on how much we want to spend next year, but it's a lot of money. When you say stormwater, you mean sewer and stormwater. Sewer and stormwater, yeah. And I'm going to just share a little thought why I think that's kind of a need is, is I don't know if everybody's aware of this or not, but Moonlight Square would like to add a 5,000 foot addition on. They need the sewer to be able to do that. The lumberyard wants to tear it down and build a brand new lumberyard there, and they need the sewer to do that. So there's a couple of projects that are going to add to the tax base that, you know, it's going to improve things. So it's not just Moonlight Bay, you know, it's, there, it, there's more going on than just that. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. So um, the city can choose to go forward how, how you want, whether you want to not do these improvements. What, what I would say is a bad decision is to do nothing because I don't see construction costs getting less. Um, and the whole purpose of doing some of these things is to, at least in the case of uh, Whitefish Avenue, is to try and retain whatever pavement life is left. Not let the road go too far where instead of spending $50 a foot, you're spending 85 or $100 a foot. That's the thing that I, I, my takeaway would be to Public Works and to the council is that if you choose to back away from doing these full depth reclamations that are, you know, essentially reconstruction light or the bituminous overlay, I would still like you to put money towards prevention. Put more money into seal code. Protect the pavement life you have out there. It's no different than your house or your roof. Do you wait till your roof shingles or your underlayment crumbles to make a fix? No, you get on top of it because the fix at that point is way more than the preventative maintenance. So if, you, if, if there's a desire to step back and take a break, put dollars into seal coating or slurry seals or something to protect the stuff that isn't as old so you get the maximum life out there. Um, but, but stepping away and doing nothing, uh, it, 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 it could result in a short-term savings and more expenses down the road. And I think you know that. I mean, just like you said, in your own household, dice, you weigh you know? what you can spend and what you shouldn't. So. Yep. Bill, remind me when you and I looked at what the cost would be to seal coat fish. Do you remember what that number was? I think we said about $110,000 with the assumption. I mean, the seal coating is probably sixty to 70000 but we kept in $20,000 for patching, another ten or so thousand to do some ditching work along there. So... So you have to also remember that we're not going to be paying out two million bucks in one year. We're going to have a bond payment lumping all this stuff together. And interest rates today are still low. So, you, you know, you could come back and find that number to start climbing if you wait too long. So, so the discussion actually should be whether the Whitefish Avenue should be uh, chip sealed or if it should be reconstructed. Overlaid. Overlaid, whatever, overlaid, I'm sorry, overlaid. I, I, I think it's interesting, because I think actually, <laughs> uh, I think the, dis the discussion is more don't assess us. It should, well, be, that it should be general fun, because I, I, it, it's interesting that the individual that contacted me is just a proponent of stormwater and continues to tell me how the County screwed up and the road should be tipped to keep the water from going to the lake, but put it back into the, the bank. If I seal coat, I can't fix that. Mm. I, I, I don't know, maybe you know how to do that. I don't know how to seal coat and make change the crown. Um, I'm not even sure I can do it with an overlay, but I have a better chance with it. So um, I hear what you're saying, but I, I thought a lot of people were really wanted it to be a general fund versus more the improvement concern. 
But. So they want a chip seal. Yeah, because <laughs> that fits in your policy. <laughs> they don't want to pay a thousand dollar assessment fee. Right, right, right. I, 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 you I know, I still I go back to that thousand dollars. If you're paying it over ten years, you know, you're getting a you're getting a good road for probably the next 20, 25 years by overlaying, and it's costing you a hundred. 110 bucks a, a year for 10 years. I mean, when you look at it that way, the the assessment argument, I just don't buy. You know, if we were talking, it was gonna be $6,000 a piece over 10 years, yeah, and then people would be screaming. I can't believe people are so wild over a $1,000 assessment to have a, a decent road and you can pay it off over 10 years. I don't understand why you're going 10 years, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> I mean, you, granted, you can go five or whatever. It's well, if, if, the, if the chip seal's going to have it increase the life five years, that's what the assessment should be over is five years because they're going to get another one after five years. Yeah, but I'm talking if we do the overlay. Oh, well, if it's okay. a chip seal, over then the general that's maintenance, fund that's plays, right. pays but even, for it. Even the overlay in... Maybe in five years is going to be. Isn't the overlay expected to last another the, the 20, overlay, 25 years? I think the overlay will last 15, 20 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think you'll, you'll be able Stand to chip correctly. seal on top of that. The, one of the things that it, I really do think Whitefish Avenue is on that, that, that area where it's just not so obvious. Uh, there isn't enough, like on uh, Rushmore, where we're realigning an intersection where there's a, or where you come up to the county road where the T intersection with the boulevard is kind of goofy, and we know that there's dips. I mean, it, that one just sort of, the right solution comes out to just full depth reclamation when it's all said and done. Whitefish is in that different category. The, where I came to the conclusion that I think we should be doing an um, overlay is it's a two inch road, which in our area, a three and a half inch road gets us kind of a, a full constructed depth. Now. I know Doug and I have had these discussions when he was city engineer in Anoka, right? You, uh, Coon Rapids. Yeah. Coon, Ra Coon Rapids. He, you had low residential, low uh, volume residential roads that were two inches. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they got to, two inches. So there's, there's not black and white crystal views on this. But <clears throat> when I look at Whitefish, if you seal coat it, you can save dollars now. You can. Um, and I think you can patch it before and you can make it go as long as you can. But even with the seal coat, I don't know if your life of the road extends much past five to seven years. Now again, life of the road is dependent upon the eye of the beholder. If you're okay driving over bumps and cracks, maybe that's fine. But my point is in five to seven years, you're not doing an overlay at $50 a foot. You're doing a reclamation at 85 to $100 a foot. So short term, and, and maybe, you know, if you're along the lines of I'm selling that place in four years, this makes a ton of sense, but the cost is coming if the city intends to improve that in the future. Tom, your point about people going wild over $1,000, I think part of it is because people, a lot of people on that road don't feel the need to replace the road right now. I, I think that's what starts it. They think they're going to the cabin and that's fine or out. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. I think you're exactly right. But that's the yeah. point is they're paying, that's what kind of bothers me a little bit is that they're paying assessments on their main, on the on their, this is a second home for many of them and they're paying assessments in their primary residence and they're not complaining about that. But we as permanent residents, uh, I mean, it's this is really a, well, it is a decision for me. I, certainly for me, it's a, it's. A, a lot of us have lived up here for quite a few years, and and do we want all these roads to be like Anchor Point now? You know, I mean, that's 25, 30 years ago. They were all gravel. We were, had the road grader going up and down the road all the time. Now they're all blacktop. But do we need them to be fresh and new? That's where that's where a lot of that frustration comes from. Is people just think they're fine. Yeah. Don't touch them. You know, and I looked at Whitefish when because this we inherited this. And, and that's not that there's a bad decision, but I asked the question, why, why was Whitefish picked? And then when I've gone out and looked, there's a lot of houses along there. It gets, I, my assumption is, and part of it is, Cross Lake is not a traditional lot and block city where you can identify the collector and that's where uh, the roads meander and they go around places, but that's an area where there's a lot of density. 
And so I think it does get a lot of traffic, and I think that's probably why it rose to your interest of replacing initially, is there's a lot of traffic that goes on that road. So we should be trying to preserve that road by doing I, the overlay. I've been driving that road for a lot of years, and it's been kind of rough, like it is right now for mm -hmm. a lot of years. It doesn't seem to be falling apart to me this year to next year or last year. There are spots, but I mean, it's not like we're gonna come to a point in time and it's gonna dissolve. It, I'm not a black, you know, mm -hmm. it's not my expertise, but I've just been watching it over a lot of years and it doesn't seem to be changing. And that I think is what the people are, that's where the frustration but it, comes But I in. think that's kind of some of the, so when you view that the road is now getting bad, then it might be too late to do the lower well, cost. I, I think the people, the general public, are viewing this brand new big city hall, the new fire, they're looking at all the money we're spending right now. That's where a lot of their frustration is. And so that's what my point is, is do we have to do that or should we pay down some of this stuff? Maybe do 10 roads one year instead of five, then we really get an economy mm -hmm. of scale. And then we get a bond and, and we do a project. But there's just a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. a lot of stuff going on. Yes. Mr. Mayor, we, we've gone down this road before, where all of a sudden some, we keep kicking the can down the road, and eventually those 10 roads are 15 roads. And then we're trying to pick catch it, like we did before, and Tom can testify to this, and it takes every year of the levy going up to get, to get caught back up, and now we're to the point where our levy's finally getting about a zero, but we, we got to, we got to, you just can't. Not do nothing. You have to do something. Well, I, I agree, but to, to what extent and how do we? Okay, that's yeah. And, and, so, and I can't rub the glass wall any our, better than anybody can. Our, our our expert is our engineer. We've hired an expert. Okay, our engineer. He's given us a recommendation that, in his opinion, it needs to be maintained. Now, are we going to go with what our expert is telling us? Or are we going to take and go off on our own? And and that's what it comes down to. It's the, those two choices. I, I'm, I'm here to give info, and ultimately, cities make just, decisions all the time for a variety of reasons, and that's completely we need fine. To hear from these three. Yes. Okay. We've been to a lot of talking now. We need to hear from you guys. Uh, one thing I can say is that if you're looking at a resolution order in the project next uh, week, when you order a project, you know, proposed assessments become pending assessments on a property. And if those people would sell their property before it gets built or assessed, they'd have to pay that assessment. And so for assessing whitefish area or not assessing whitefish area, that decision should be made before you order that job. I agree. It's kind of a legal thing where it becomes a pending assessment. It'll, it'll show up on their property that you have a pending there. That won't show until when, 23? Well, paying taxes yeah. and the assessments would happen till twenty. Could happen in twenty two or twenty three. Not not until after yeah. the city. We build in twenty two by the next year. Be on the taxes. Yeah. Twenty three is when they'll be on the But if you order if you order the project like next week, it's a pending assessment at that point. So these people are liable for that that assessment. If the city goes, again, if so the city, you can you can kill the job yeah. if you wanted to, and then it would yeah, not be Yeah, I was going to say anyway. that's only if the city goes forward with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as soon as you order it, it becomes pending. Mm -hmm. I'd go back to what both the Daves said. This Dave is talking about low interest rates, which makes sense. And what you started out talking about was every year the price of these projects has gone up so if we just kick the can down the road some more you know are the interest rates gonna be higher and is the cost gonna jump another you know that's right I mean just like it's been doing every year for the last three years so I'm, what kind of cycle are we in I mean that's what we got to try to figure out Well, now, if you didn't, if you didn't want to order the project <clears throat> at this time, you could uh, have Phil go ahead and prepare the plans and specs. That's, you know, getting ahead a little bit, but at least you're making progress and he can update the, assess or the uh, estimates. 
and come back with that and, and, and you until, can order the project. Until we get the estimates back, that's going to be when we pull the pin on it. I mean, right, you're, 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 so uh, maybe you're right on. Maybe this come this there. public hearing that we had um, is the, was the improvement hearing. It's to give this, the, the, really the mock assessment, the idea of what the pending assessment would be if the city goes forward, does this project, adopts the final assessment. For us as engineers, we can't go forward until we're ordered or given approval to go forward by the city. Um, yeah. And that's what this resolution is, to move it forward. So I, mean, I kind of look at it as, at my perspective, is it, if you approve this resolution, if the council approves this resolution, then we start preparing the final plans to get them in shape to bid if the city wants to go yeah. forward and bid them. And then that allows us to refine the engineering estimates. So I would say to you, it, um, it means we would start spending more of your money that you've, we, you've already hired us to do, but we just never went to that next step. We only went toward to the preliminary. So we'll be sending you invoices for some costs. So there's some cost. Then in January, if you get the plans, you get the cost estimates, and you decide you're not ready to go forward, you will have incurred that cost. But not, but that, not, not the big cost. The plans are still good going forward. Your big cost is actually ordering the construction. If we go, Phil, if we go forward, and you come, come back with a proposal, then at that point in time, we could pick and choose? We've already given you a proposal. So we, we, could come, we could do the design, and you could decide how you wanted to do it. But I mean, I think the only one you're talking about is Whitefish Avenue, whether that's a seal coat or a bituminous overlay. So I mean, we would want direction sooner than later on that. Do we put time into making it a bituminous overlay, or do we put time into a seal coat? Because we need to let the county know, know as soon as possible too, if we're right. included in the They're going to want to know um, in by November if we want to partner with them on seal coating. I, I kind of think maybe Doug can comment, but I think our city's getting big enough, and our residents, if they're non-voting or not, they kind of expect things to be maintained here. And I think that for the last few years we've included some money in our budget to do things like roads and I think we we have to continue doing that I don't like to sit up here and see the engineer Charge us all this stuff and then at the 12th hour then we decide we're not going to do it And then we waste all that money and the time and all these meetings <coughs> I, I, you, you just have to do the maintenance period I think we have to uh decide what we want to do. I, I don't think you'll get a good bid. If, you're, if you put in the contract, you have the right to pull anything you want out of there. I agree. They're not, yeah. going, to, they're not going to bid. They're going to bid high, and then we're going to be paying more because we, haven't, we don't have the uh, amount there. They, uh, I guess uh, the big question, the big question is the Whitefish Avenue, and I think we should just decide either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it, one or the other, and move forward and, and, and quit worrying about the assessments and stuff. Just do, make the right decision and move forward and have the project bid, order it. I just don't think you're going to get a good bid if you're going to put out a bid spec that says, we have the right to pull anything we want out of there. <laughs> I don't doesn't work I that way. I don't disagree with you at all because uh, I would be where does a contractor put risk at? They throw money at risk. So and explain the, the water issue on Whitefish. If you do an overlay, can you deal with stormwater running off to the north instead you know, of um, or is that I have to I I think there's obvious areas where the, there's water running to the lake. I think at, at the uh, deeded access or whatever to the lake at John Forney's. Apparently there's a stormwater issue, which Ted and I have a concept of how we could deal with that. Um, at the Whitefish Trail, is that the one that goes down? Is it called Whitefish Trail that goes down to that area? I think water runs along there. I think there's something that could be done there to 
at least stop it. If it rains heavy enough, water's going to the lake. But if we can catch that initial stuff. I don't know about other areas. I'm surprised when I drive along there, there are a number of areas where, yes, towards the lake it drops off, but then when I look down further into someone's property, their home site kind of comes up a little and there's kind of a nice bowl. And I'm of the believer that you knew what you bought. If your land was lower than the road, water's coming your way. We can't change that, but we can look for areas to get some of it. The overlay gives me a better chance to tip the road where it makes sense. The seal coat is, is basically painting the road, putting chip on it so it's rough. You're not gonna change water across the center line or anything there. We can try and talk to people, see if they're willing to let us do a little V-ditch in areas. As long as the V-ditch doesn't run into somebody's driveway, you know, or down into their garage, I think people are generally willing to work with you as long as you don't take trees. It's a lot to balance on that road. I mean, don't change the character of our road, but take care of the storm water. Okay, I see how, do you see how we took care of stormwater on the end of Manhattan Point Boulevard? So there's a big darn pond there. I mean, so, I don't know, getting off tangent here. Okay, Commission. <laughs> I guess I, I'd still, if they're screaming over a $1,000 one, if we don't, if we do the seal coat and in seven years we have to do a, Full depth reclamation. If and you that's think there's four thousand, yeah. If you think they're screaming now, um, and it, I just think we ought to do it and do it right. And you know, we're we're kind of at that point where you know we've worked on the assessment policy for what two years now, and we finally this is the implementation of the the assessment policy. Everyone is saying, well, in the past, in the past, you know, we got to move forward in the future. We've got 55, 60 miles of roads that we got to maintain. And, you know, we need to have the assessment policy where I think in Doug's email, you know, he was making the case that, um, you know, the Nagel, Nagel appraisal thing, there is a benefit to their, their property. They're getting a new, new road, you know, and, and they, they should pay a portion of it. And I think the city's at a point where you're talking tens of millions of dollars coming down the pike on these roads and the city's gonna need help financing those and I think you gotta do it through assessments, even if, you know, they're minimal assessments, um, but everything is going to help because yeah. there, there's a huge, huge cost coming down the road on these, uh, on these roads. I don't know. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve this resolution and send it to the city council so they can make the final decision. <laughs> I'll second it. So what was that again? <laughs> you don't have to put the, the last part of my thing in that motion. I make a motion we send this to the city council for consideration. Oh, okay. Not on how to handle whitefish one way or another. I can look at whitefish and say, uh, you know, you could uh, seal coat it. Last five years, seal coat it again, another 100000 or whatever. You've spent half of what you would spend to overlay it, and eventually, you get to 30 years, you're probably looking at a reconstruction anyhow. I don't know, different ways to look at it. And the road's not that bad a condition right now. I think a seal coat, like Ted had seal coated one street in there that we looked at it that one day this spring and looked pretty darn nice, seal coated. You've done, you've done a good job on, on you know, crack building and stuff like that. I mean. Well, I can amend my motion that um, Whitefish, we forward the, the resolution, but Whitefish, they consider a seal coat. If you think it'll last five to seven years and then, you know, the people have to, have to realize they may get another assessment and mm -hmm. 
after my 33 years sitting in assessment hearings, they're going to come right back and throw it in your face. You just assessed us five years ago. But Tom, now you're, you're not going to assess them with the seal numbers, numbers, right? right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. They're not going to get an assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, they're not going to get an assessment this time, but their future and it's assessment won't be. Sixty, seventy thousand dollars compared to four fifty. What's that? It's sixty or seventy to seal code it. Is that true? Yeah, but you'll do the patching ahead of time, so you should plan for a hundred ten thousand dollar project. Yeah. But and it's twenty five percent of what the. Yep. You can maybe do some is. drainage improvements if we just seal code it. You can do we, some yeah, ditching or something. We I mean, can try to do that. Yeah. If you put two inches on top of it. You still got to get rid of the water someplace. The yep. world's going to be two inches higher. It's going to be a quarter inch higher, or half inch higher, or whatever. So. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Just, and, it, and again, the city can do whatever they want, but when it comes time to fix that road, you didn't reduce the cost that someone's going to pay. So I won't be here. <laughs> so we will. Okay, so we have a motion to <laughs> recommend the council that they. Uh, adopt a resolution, ordinance improvement and preparation of plans, which would include seal coating of the whitefish area and no assessment to the whitefish area at this time. That way it would not be a pending assessment. If you kept that in as an overlay, then you'd have a pending assessment on those properties and you'd have to remove it at some other time if you decided to change it later. So, I guess that's, that's the motion, that's right? Motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Motion a second. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. City Council <coughs> on this to air. No one. Next Maybe meeting. Not, right. Okay, the next item is a limited use agreement. Michael and Lisa Roca on Manhattan Point Boulevard. Uh, um, we really don't have any information on that. Maybe somebody can help. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, Kevin McCormick with Land Design Solution. Uh, Mr. Roca is here today as well. Uh, you may remember this one uh, was on the ticket item for the potential road vacation of this area. Uh, as we all know, that's kind of been tabled till council establishes their criteria then the ROCAs can make a decision whether they want to move forward. That's not what we're here for today. We're here for to uh, uh, consider the uh, use of this area to be paved. Um, it's currently gravel at this particular time. Uh, it's been gravel for a very long period of time, over 40 years. I believe Mr. Roca will speak to that. Uh, from the end point of this, uh, right now we've got... Uh, a little bit of a drop from the top area of the roadway down onto Man Manhattan Beach Boulevard. It's about 12%. Uh, so what we're really asking for today is under the limited use agreement, we understand the terms and conditions of it. Uh, we'd like to pave this and that way we can control some of the water, some of the material that's coming out onto Manhattan Beach, Beach Boulevard, and the material just being washes from the gravel. Uh, this can then get directed down into the ditch area and they would continue the use that they have uh, been maintaining for a number of years. Um, th th this also kind of came up in 2010 uh, when the Rokas uh, uh, got a variance on the uh, property uh, to do some improvements on their home. One of the reasons that we're limited in space is the uh, septic system. Uh, on uh, lot one is interfering so that this uh, Arlington Beach Road area has been used like I said for a number of years so it's a short drop but it does carry a little bit of, of grade to it about 12% it's gravel uh, the only thing they're asking for is to be able to pave this area so that we can control some of that water and uh, like I say get away from some of the erosion issues of that driveway uh, Mr. Roca is here, and I think he'd like to speak just a little bit uh, on some of the history on that, and he can do a better job than I okay. can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's like Kevin said. I think this driveway has probably been the same way for 80 years. We've owned the, the place since 2008, and, you know, in 2010, we 
brought in some stuff to stop the runoff and it just keeps getting worse. So you can't, I can't plow anymore because the ridges are deep and, and even this most recent rainstorm that we finally got, I went out and took pictures and so I just think it's a smart thing to do to, to pave it and stop the runoff and I'm not changing the road. We're not changing anything that hasn't been that way for probably since 1940. So that's the request and I appreciate the opportunity. Anyone have any questions? Mr. Chair, this went to the Park Department um, a little over a week ago, I believe it was. They did agree to move this forward to the Council. Mm, okay. Can I ask you a question about your septic system? Yeah. You got the house and the sewer tanks are in the front? Yeah, so the... the <laughs> It's really a mess. Really what happens is the septic goes out the back towards the lakeside, makes a 90 degree turn to the right, yeah. and then runs all the way down that entire length of the driveway and the drain field is on the roadside. So, so I can't, so yeah, sorry. The, if that drain field fails, where's the next one gonna go? If you're gonna blacktop everything? You, you know, you're required to have an alternate or a backup today. So, don't know the answer to that. Did, and in, in consultation with Rob Bear to possibly reroute that line to the existing septic tank and field that's left over from the property I purchased from Ruth Mojones. So I own the adjacent property that has a working and active septic system. So as recently as today, Mr. Rob Abar was out to the property and I said, if I wanted to reroute, could I do that into the leftover septic system and drain field from the former property? And he said, absolutely, that's an option, da 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 da. I said, well, let me go to the, let me go to the meeting this evening and see if, if we're really gonna move forward on that. And I can, full disclosure here, it's in my interest if that approval is granted that I would probably tap into that former septic and drain field to minimize the risk of a deep freeze and, and my septic line freezing. So then you're really asking for two things. You're asking for the driveway, the black up in the driveway, and the reroute your sewer system to your other property, the other side of our, our property. Okay, so kind of the, that's, I'm just no, no, and, and, and so I'm just being 100% transparent here. I don't know if I'm actually asking for that or if I have to ask for it. What I'm trying to do is be prudent and say, okay, if I get permission to asphalt this, and my septic line is currently running under it, am I taking a risk for increased freezing? One, if I am taking that risk. Are there other options that I can consider? So I don't know if I'm asking for that permission tonight. I'm not asking for it if that's a requirement by this. No, it's, it's not. Yeah. I, the reason I threw it out is I just think it's prudent on your to be thinking about that. Yeah. Because you are right. You're risking that frost going down a little deeper in your driveway and you don't want the problem with your drain field or your, your pipes freezing. You have the other property available. And is it time for you then to ask for both things or just to get the driveway today and worry about the other later? So that's, I'm just bringing it up. Yep, no, I appreciate it. It's, it's the same point I thought of. So, um, you know, I have, so, formerly we had Justin Noring of Cabin Care doing all of our maintenance. And at that point, he did run a heat line down the existing line. Before I even went down this road, I asked him, what risk am I taking? And he said, yeah, it might be okay, it might not. Everyone's gonna have a subjective opinion on it. You know, what I don't wanna do, to your point, is get permission and all of a sudden tear up an asphalt driveway. That's not gonna happen. So I respectfully suggest I would consider that because it's in my best interest, but I would, you know, it, as long as it's permissible to do that, you know, for if I can do that. And, and, and is that adjacent lot you have, is that a buildable lot? Well, I'll answer it this way. I, I, it must be because it had a double wide mobile home on it prior. So if you were gonna consider moving your septic to that lot in the future, there could be another house and another septic there? 
I mean, right? Yeah, so the comment, and again, and I'm just trying to be honest here, and I'm going off the conversation today. The question that Rob Aber asked me, if you run that septic off your current house to the former one, yeah, you're not, you're limiting what you could do development-wise in the future, and my answer to him was, don't care, have zero aspirations of doing anything at all to the structure. So, so then, uh, that's how I would answer that, if that answers the question. I guess it's a buildable lot, but it, it ain't gonna be buildable by me. I'm not planning to do any, which is why it's an easy decision for me, if permissible. It's just a workaround solution, and I'm neither here nor there. I'm assuming. I'm assuming there's a, a usable uh, system on that lot. Yeah, so I, it, uh, yeah, yeah, so I would have to have it inspected and are make sure. For sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it's usable because it was only this past year that we had the, the mobile home removed. Okay. So, yeah, definitely usable. And I saw that Honey Wagon was just there because uh, they leave a nice date on the, on the cap. It's been inspected by Honeywagon. With, well, I shouldn't say the term inspected. It was emptied two years ago. What is structure number four? Is that a garage building? If that's nearest the road, that is. Yeah, I don't tell so the, we have the mobile home removed. There is a single stall garage that is on that property that the former owner used. And I, I left it because the structure is good. And I actually park my vehicle in there. Mick, you're probably familiar with it. You've seen it many times. So I think that's what you're referring to is the garage, yeah. legacy garage. I guess the thing I'm struggling with is, you know, once this is all blacktopped, then the next step is for you to come in and ask to have it vacated. And, and then everyone says, well, you know, he's already got it blacktopped and he's, now he's got his sewer run over to the other lot. And, you know, it's one more access to the lake that gets vacated, which it w I'm not saying it wouldn't make sense at that point, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of struggling with, you know, do people come down here now, you know, to go to the top of the bluff and look out or, right. you know, and by the time you blacktop it, you know, then it really looks like, <laughs> Am I going down somebody's driveway to take a look at the lake? And I'm just throwing this out, and I, I probably shouldn't because there's a committee that's working on these accesses. But to me, it would make more sense if you were to get permission to blacktop this if it were considered to, and you'd have to move, you know, drain field in that garage to, and the city did it to, to one. I don't know, last spring where, you know, they vacated one and created another one on the other side of the, the lot. And I know your garage is there and part of your right. drain field would be there, but that would consolidate your property and then you get blacktop and, mm -hmm. you know, redo your drain field, you know, right across from your main house. Or, yeah. I'm sort of rambling here, but I'm, I'm struggling with having that whole area blacktopped and at that point it's kind of like well you know we're, we're so far down the road now we can't do anything but vacate it and, and we do understand that. Uh, that that's absolutely but blacktop isn't going to change anything of its existing use that's been there for a considerable amount of time I know it does give the appearance of improvement um, but I think we are looking forward to what happens with the road vacations and what you're just mentioning the possibility of changing those two areas. Is anyone using it right now? Um, I think people could uh, talk about that, but right now there is no view to that lake. Uh, you can't see the lake from the top of any of those portions. The trees are that big. Uh, we've got photos of that. So I didn't really want to get down the road vacation portion of this. I understand the situation and the consideration but really what we are merely asking is the use of the blacktop over the existing gravel driveway, the terms and use of those that are set forward by Mr. Persons in his use uh, agreement um, call for the, the city can always have it removed. 
Um, so I think that's the portion that gives you solace that you still have control of this area and yet the Rokas are still maintaining the use that they've had uh, for many, many years. So hopefully that helps. And then even if that were to be a paved walkway down to a viewing corridor, uh, the trees were removed and that type of thing, the ability to directional bore underneath uh, any pavement, whether it's Mr. Roca's or the city's, is always there. Uh, I've done it at my own uh, property now too. So and that wouldn't disturb the pavement or cause it to be cut open again. So I hope that helps. And then I would just add to, to your point, I, I, you know, I want to do this because it's the right thing to do. I understand the other implications, but if it comes to the point that I'm re setting up septic systems in a completely different place just to accommodate asphalting a road, I can only imagine that's a significant expense that I probably would just step back and say, you know what? I'll, I've been driving on a dirt road driveway for that long. We can let the runoff continue. I'm just trying to do the right thing. And then I do want to speak because I, it's important that this be heard to this group. There is no practical use for this easement, zero. And anyone who tells you that they're using this easement to view the lake or to watch fireworks or to have these meditative moments, I would suggest is blatantly false. I've been there, no one is doing this, and I know this is off the path, and I know Mr. McCormick said we didn't want to go there, but this needs to be said and documented. You have some people that have disgruntled opinions who in the past had access to the lake through the former generosity of, of the former owner, which for obvious reasons I could not grant, not the least of which is insurance, but if the Discussion is on practicality. That's a, that's a non-discussion. So anyway, I appreciate the opportunity. I've taken up too much time. Um, that's that's exactly what we're asking for: is 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 permission to do the right thing on this, eliminate the runoff, we're not changing anything. Your points are well taken on the on the septic and what I may do to that. What I probably won't do is <laughs> totally move the, the field. So that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. I'm kind of coming in at the 11th hour. I don't know everything about this, but have you talked about moving the right of way to the other side of that lot? Has that been part of anything? That's what I was just raising the issue of. We are to that position, yeah. We're, we're on hold with that activity with the uh, maybe uh, not formulating anything yet. I mean, I don't know the landscape there, but that sure would give him a nice lot with all kinds of room for septic and driveway and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. We have done that. But, but that's not what's in front of the commission. Okay. And they need to address that. In fact, my only point is I know the septic on that edge of the property is right up against oh, sorry. 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 Okay, the, the, and again, I, and my only observation on that is on that edge of the property, that septic butts up real close to my neighbor's property. So I, I don't know, I don't, I'm not an expert. I just know I was out there today and it's super close. I think you probably see that too. Anyway, that's how I would answer that. Do you want to speak? Give your name. My name is Harold Hawes. I live on 12143 Manhattan Point Boulevard. I've known Mike a number of years. And what I say, I don't want to hurt Mike, who's the attorney. But what I don't want to see up in our area there is a lot of blacktop being put down. And I watched that property, I've been up there 20 years, and one time somebody planted a row of trees in there in, on that easement and they all died. And uh, I remember when they restored that 
shed, or there was a little shed there they had to rebuild. Then they put in a brand new drain field. I think that was before Mike bought it. And I just like to see the area left natural at this point. And this, um, because we start doing this on one, then the people that have blacktop areas, they want to blacktop them, and then you're going to have to give in to that. Uh, I agree that there's no other place for Mike's driveway but right where it is, and I'm sure when he bought the property, he knew the driveway was on the easement. Uh, I used to park my boat over there when I knew Ruth, I mowed the lawns over there, and uh, I just think it's unfair to pour this black topping in there. Uh, there must be another way to keep the black top down. So everything goes in the ground, not, not drained down to the street. I haven't seen any big water rushes down that driveway, and I've been there a long, long time. Uh, so I, I don't want to hurt Mike, but uh, I feel that if the city has rules, Cavalier, Mr. Cavalli made some rules as well, and I think those should be followed. Thank you. Thank you. So, John, I'm going to ask you a question here. Um, we have uh, impervious limits, and 25% means that you have to do water. 15%. Is it 15? So right now, I don't know if we've talked about this. Does the city own the right of way? Who owns the right of way? And then the question I'll get right to it is: It looks like we're going to be blacktopping over half of the right of way. So I mean, is that right to do? That we just sit here and allow the right of way to get covered up? It, you know. So the, the correct answer is the impervious limit on any residential piece of property is 25%. The city doesn't have fee title ownership to this piece of property. They are, it is held in trust by the city to maintain and manage. And the problem that you have is it encompasses the whole right of way, not just that 20 foot space in between the two lots. Someone had asked the question earlier about, can you move it over? Um, the, the other question I heard asked was, is, is this a buildable lot? We don't have buildable or unbuildable lots. We have lots that you can build on if you can meet all the setbacks. So right now, Mr. Roca owns two lots that have a building envelope on each one. He could build two homes there. If he was to move this over to the east or the west, um, and and say we we're gonna we wanna we'd like the city to abandon vacate the middle one but we want to move it over to the other side of the property. He would effectively then remove the ability to build two homes on this property. There would be one lot to build one home on, and that is it. That's not the question that's asked. The question that's being asked is: Are you going to allow him a use agreement to blacktop? the section of the driveway that is already an impervious surface. To me, there's no difference between blacktop and the gravel that he has in place there. I don't count it any differently on either side. Um, I certainly think that Mr. Roca needs to know that if he does need to put a new septic system in and he does need to cross the right of way right now, he will be back here in front of this body asking for another use agreement. I will not issue you a permit until you have that in hand. So please keep that in mind. Um, anything else you would want to do with a, a different septic system on the existing lot that's on the, on the west side there, you would be required to get a variance, is my guess, even to replace the tanks that are in front because they're too close to the bluff. So you get a lot of challenges on this lot. It might be best I, to come back and ask for to move the right away versus what you're trying to do right now. I think that would solve more of your problems than anything I think you would have found that out in the in the process that we're working at that that might be the best route to go anyway so thank you okay so we're looking for a recommendation to the city council 
regarding this uh, this matter. Um, ready for a motion? I'm going to abstain from this vote. Mike is my neighbor. Yep. And I don't think it's appropriate for me to speak up one way or the other. Okay. Me and you, Tom. I guess I see this as an erosion problem that black topping may solve. Uh, the septic system is, a, is another question like John just brought up. But I'm just, uh, this agreement that's been put together by attorney, I guess I would uh, make a motion to, to uh, agree with that to the city council. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Two to nothing, basically. One abstention. So your motion is to approve the request and move it to council. Is that what I heard? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Next item is uh, Jeff's going to give an update on the wastewater treatment plant. Mr. Chairman, Council, um, we just got through a very, very busy summer, very high flows. We treated a lot of wastewater. We should be very proud of what our plant did. Um, it has done exceptional quality. Um, it has performed outstanding, and it's due to the efforts of the operators and uh, the staff and uh, everybody being on top of what they're supposed to be doing. And it's, it's working well. With that, we last week we had a open house for, you know, we're bidding a project for some uh, remodeling of our clarifiers. That would, the work would be done this winter. Um, we had an open house last week. I can tell you there are five major plan holders right now as far as general contractors. Four of them showed up at the, the, the uh, site. And there's two major electrical contractors, and both of them were there. So that was good to see. We weren't sure how many were going to show. Um, this is going to be opened up on the 13th. The, the bid whoop is due. Um, it's virtual, so anybody wants to see it, it'll be. So and then as soon as we get the information, we'll pass it back on to Public Works and then the, the Council for further action. Um, Again, we don't know where prices of things are. I know that was a lot of questions that the general contractors had. Fiberglass, of all things, is in short supply. The fiberglass weirs in the tanks is in short supply. They asked for an alternative, and they want to weld them out of stainless steel. We didn't have an objective to that, so that's one of the addendums to the, the pro part of this process. Um, but we should, I think we're going to have a good, with that many bidders, we should have a good project and we'll see how it goes. But again, the treatment plant is working well. We're getting into fall. We're going to start shutting part of the plant down. Um, we'll be doing cleaning of our, the collection system in the very near future here. Um, but like I said, everything has worked well this summer. So. When are the bids due back to? 13th. Of this month, next week. Yep, next week. Or the bids will be in before the council meeting. No. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess so. Same yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. The day of. So yeah. hopefully the engine can turn around. I don't know. So. That's all I had as far as the update on the treatment plant, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And uh, other business, we had something about a uh, sewer bill. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I uh, Char got a letter from Mr. McCullough, Paul McCullough. Um, the one of the properties he owns is this Lake Place Realty building, just kind of kitty corner over here, this logged bold list building. Um, I guess his sprinkler system was still hooked it up to the water meter, and the water system failed. He told me he just about flooded out the brewery. 
with the water amount of water. Um, his normal bill is something about $104 a month. He had one bill of $208 and $100, one bill of $260. So all of that, well, basically that water was just going out in his yard. It didn't go down the sewer system. He's looking for a credit on his bill. Um, that's kind of where it's at. So what do you suggest? I could, I could live with this. I mean, if this is, I mean, legitimately the water didn't go down the, the sewer. We did not pay to treat the water. He paid to pump it. We didn't treat, pay to, to treat the water. It was on his yard. So he has a very consistent record of that, his water usage and his water bill. So I could, I could live with this if they. So it over. was connected to the meter, but now he's replumbed he's it so that it's. It no should longer. be taken out before the sprinkler should. Your, all your sprinklers should be because it is something that goes on the yard. You shouldn't have that going through your water meter. You should have be taking that water out beforehand. And that's that's been since. That's what the he told sewer me. I haven't the... witnessed it, but that's what he told me. Okay. So basically, the city never never treated that water. We shouldn't make him pay for it. It's that's what his you know, contention is. He wasted water, but we can't make him pay for that. I guess. Uh, Ted, I think the difference should be 220, not 260, if you do the math. I had didn't. I never even looked in the math. I just went by his letter here, so we could do a correction to that if if it's sold. Yeah. It's 260. Is it 260? Sure, I just did it. She says it is 260. So. Have there be two? <coughs> but his his bill is normally 104 a month. He has an apartment yeah. building. Yeah, he pays 52 for one and 52 then for the other, and it's always consistent, his bill. And is the sprinkler system new? No, something failed in his system, and he was not aware that it was still hooked up that way. But it just seems to me it's been hooked up that way for five years or something. It's, well, and I don't remember, I don't know when it was hooked up. I haven't paid attention to green grass there, I guess. Well, if you're okay with it, I'll make a motion. We um, refund two hundred and sixty dollars to Mr. McCullough. I'll second it. Okay. <clears throat> motion in the council, recommend the council that they refund two hundred and sixty dollars for the use of uh, water that never made it to the sewer system. All in favor, say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I have one more little one here. Um, Char reminded me that we've been selling a lot of plots out at our cemetery. And we have land that we purchased long, long ago, but we never plotted the property. We're getting to the point where access or to the, some new lots is going to be needed in the future. So at some time, we've got to put some money into surveying and plotting out the new land. We asked um, Bolton and Mink to give us a quote. Um, survey work at the cemetery is about $11,000. Um, engineering developed the large plan and turf established at about 5,000. And the, the aggregate turf lane is about 37,500. So if we wanna just go through and get the plotting done today, that's about $11,000, but we'd have to put that into this year's operating budget to do that in, for next year. Put it in the 2021 budget or 2022 next budget for okay. next year is what I meant. So. I'm not saying that we have to do the turf establishment and do the all the engineering, but if we could get the survey work done on it, get it plotted, we could be working on the staff could even be working on getting the grass and the start setting up the roads and in our free time. So. So for eleven thousand dollars, they'll lay out the roads and they'll put pins at the corners of each plot. That's a survey work to plot cemetery parcels. Is that correct? That's what I understand. Yeah. Okay. How many how many plots would that provide? You know, uh, I'll tell you, it's a big drive. It's, it's a big it's 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 big area. It's over yeah. five acres that we'd be yeah. plotting out. So, didn't that's, that come to lot. council this year? 
the same request come to council? We put money in the, the, the budget and we it got dropped in last year's budget to, as far as plotting out the cemetery. I think last year you put 50,000 in and that got taken out of the budget. But it has been topic of discussion, so then we asked Bolton to make because we are legitimately we were selling ourselves out. But I think if you know if we went forward and did this, um, you know, as long as you guys are well aware of where the pins are, then maybe oh, yeah. the staff can put the gravel roads in. And, That's what we would uh, plan on doing. Yeah. I just got to express a concern of mine about it. Is if we do that. Then I would assume if the lots were available, you'd sell them over there, without the front half being full. I would I would caution the council not to sell them. But let's let's get it plotted, and let's <coughs> continue to get the rest of our cemetery filled up first, and then at some point the council can we can make a recommendation. The you know we get down to the last 10, 15 percent of the lots. We come to the shore and I come to the council and say, okay, we need to open up the next. By that time, we should have it, the grass established. And When they put pins in, they're metal pins, so you go out there with a metal detector. And that's how we find them. them today. Okay. There's actually a, on the, the of every, you know, there's lot and blocks. Yeah. And they're four foot six by 10 foot, the lots are, so four foot six wide, 10 feet long. And then there'll be a walkway, which are four feet. And then you go another block. And then there'll be a service road that's 10 feet. And then you go another lot and block. And then on the corners of these lots and blocks, we got this big map that shows us uh, it's lot 22, block 5. And you, you can go to the, the, be able to go onto the grid and take and find the corner marker. And there's this big aluminum oh. pin with a steel pin in the bottom, or steel rod in the bottom of it. And you can find those and then locate where you're at. That's how we identify where we're at. Okay. I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but I just, you know, once we start doing that, what are we doing for maintenance on that five acres now? Just running a flail mower over it? We're keeping it mowed. Remember, we, uh, Ron Hopkins donated some trees. They've yeah. grown, have been pretty established. They're coming. Um, but basically, we've letting it get growing because remember somebody the purple we we bought the property from they took stripped all the topsoil off yep. so we brought some topsoil in we've tried to get that built back up so there's something there and just sugar sand out there wasn't there some talk um about when you when you lay out that wasn't there going to be like a concrete strip where headstones goes we talked about something like that but it's never came to any further than talk would would that be included in in what we're doing now and is, does that have to be um, does Bolton and Mank need to make an allowance for I don't know what it is a two foot concrete pad or if, if that's the way that the council wants to go that would be fine but that would be direct for the direction to the and I'm right not now, saying right that's the way it is. I just remember that, that that's what was being proposed years ago when we laid it out that the way cemeteries do it now, you know, you, you run this concrete um, strip down there and that's what headstones go on. So you're not, I don't know, I guess then as far as mowing and maintenance and stuff, you know, you're running alongside that and you're not trying to go around headstones and and all the other things but and we can consider that as part of the what to move forward but I, I i've got concerns on how do you take this long without a concrete crack strip without breaking and yeah. being just a crumbly mess you know right now that each headstone has a basically a concrete or granite base yeah. a footing and then the headstone is either glued or screwed to that base yeah. and and I think you know, the they, other they shift and move all yeah. the time on that frost. So the other thing we we talked about, you know, it's up to this council as it gets developed, but that that new section would would only allow flat headstones. That was one of the topics so of this discussion that we bring up with the council, is we just 
say everything is flat and there's no more rain. From a maintenance standpoint, you're not trying to weed whip around and run mowers around headstones. It's just I know. Back and I, forth. My folks are at Fort Snelling and they tried that too, but it seemed like it failed because <laughs> they went back to the. I mean, there's just a huge difference when you're. Yeah. You got roll, something. Roll the top. Yeah, it's all. It kind of, and you know, then you got to run around and try to figure out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's. I, I know guess. It. Surveying it is yeah. first step. Yeah. So. Okay, so oh, is that a recommendation of City Council? Then, I, I would. I would like the recommendation to include it in this year's or in next year's budget. Eleven thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. Ocean on that. I'll make a motion, but I have some other things related to the budget too. I'll make a motion. We recommend eleven thousand for the initial surveying of the cemetery additional area. Yeah. Okay. I'll second. Motion is second. Uh, recommend it to the city council. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Nope. 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 I, I'd say that. I still got uh, oh, you some other business. I didn't hear you. I always have to have other business. Um, I asked this last year, and I think it changed. But are you going to the end of next year? My my. Yeah. Um. I really don't want to share my my schedule right now. Okay. The only reason I'm I'm asking is. I spent a couple hours looking at the budget this morning, and if we were to, or if, if you were to be leaving at the end of next year, there's nothing in the budget for a replacement that probably should come on a month or two before you leave. Um, the other question, I, you know, I'm getting personal here, and I don't mean to, but you know, right now it's your license that's running the the plant. Mm -hmm. Is there, if you were to leave, is there anyone on staff that's capable of taking over, getting Nate, the license? Under under the rules and regulations that the state of Minnesota has, Nate has his two licenses that he needs to operate the plant. He has a Class B license. He has a Class B license, and he has his Type Four sludge disposal license okay. today. All right. Um, and then another thing I noticed in the budget, there's a hundred thousand dollars for biosolids. Um, you know, I guess that that'll be discussed at the council level. Or no, it's a million dollars for biosolids. That's what it was. I knew there was a one and a bunch of zeros. A million dollars. <coughs> I thought the council was putting that off. I just want the council to be aware of this. Okay. They were right now. We're relying on Pine River. I have had some discussion with other people. Pine River is actually looking at scrapping out their whole treatment plant, going to a pond system, and there will be no more Pine River sanitary treatment plant. They will have a big pond system, and they will be going to spray irrigation and be spraying it on fields. If that moves forward, I just want everybody to be aware we'd lose our biosalts. It's not tomorrow, but I just want to be everybody to aware that you're going to have to sometime step up and address biosalts. Okay. And then my, my other um, question is... Um, a rate increase on the sewer bills. There's been no discussion of that. Um, I noticed the revenues on the budget jumped um, for operating or user fees. And I don't know if that's based on there's more connections or, or what, but um, I think last year we raised at $2. And then when we got to the, the budget meetings, you know, we kind of wished we would have raised it more, and I'm I'm just questioning, you know, should this commission, based on your recommendation, be recommending that they look at a rate increase so you can plug that into the budget? 
It's a discussion I have not had with Mike yet. Truthfully, I have not. I just have not had time to do it. But he's saying it has to go up. Yeah. That was kind of my thought in looking at the, the sewer revenues and expenditures because it, it ends up getting subsidized out of the general fund at the end of the year uh, for whatever the loss is. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure. I mean, your, your next budget meeting is day after tomorrow. So um, I don't know if you should have a recommendation from staff. On, Did we have an uh, increase last year? Member, member when? Yeah, we had a two dollar increase last year. So that that carried. That was just for this year. Yeah. Hmm. I think Shar has a sheet that shows every year we've made done a raise or that. Someplace where you and I were looking at that. And I should bring that to the budget meeting with a recommendation. And I'll get with Mike and work on that. That was it for me. Okay. You can make a motion adjourn. I'll make a motion. Public works adjourned. I'll second it. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and I need a motion for the council to adjourn. I'll vote to adjourn. I'll second, second it. That. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.